Item. Terabytes. Size. Varies between 10 to 40 micrometers in length, 10 to 50 micrometers in width. Living. Yes. Sentient. Yes. Potential current hazards. Cross-contamination and infection with personnel and other living objects. Required wear or weaponry. Type 2 Biological Protection Suits. Location. Facility. Cardboard 7. Usage. Prior to activation, all personnel are to be informed of object usage and evacuated to facility Haven 19. And all objects or object instances, including instances of this object, are to be temporarily relocated to base 1 until testing has been completed and all instances of the object can be successfully recontained or have died. Prior to testing, the room designated for testing is to be sanitized completely and tested for any kind of bacteria or organic matter. If any is present prior to the test, the cleaning and sanitation process is to be repeated until all tests come up clean. During activation, the room testing is being performed in is to be remotely vacuum sealed to prevent any attempted escape of infected test subjects or instances of the object. All rooms used for testing of the object are to be cleaned and sterilized by test subjects prior to being returned to normal usage. All bones left by the object during testing are to be kept in cold storage for 10 days after testing. If no request has been made to maintain storage of any set of bones, then all bones in cold storage will be incinerated at the end of the 10 days. In the event that any personnel, test subjects or objects are seen with any of the symptoms listed below, a Class F containment breach is to be declared and the facility is to be put on indefinite lockdown until all infected organisms are safely terminated and all unwanted instances of the object are destroyed. In the event that two attempts to disinfect Facility Cardboard 7 have failed, three on-duty heavy strike teams are to be immediately transported to the facility and are to be instructed to evacuate all surviving, non-infected items and personnel from the facility. After evacuation, the facility is to be destroyed by any means necessary and Facility Cardboard 7 is to be relocated at least 250 kilometers away from the previous rendition of the facility. All surviving personnel are to be put through thorough physical and psychological examination for a three month period. At any point during the examination, if any discrepancies or signs of infection are detected in any personnel, said personnel are to be terminated immediately. All personnel surviving the three month examination are to be relocated to a facility other than facility Cardboard 7. Symptoms of infection with instances of the object include pain at the location of infection, nausea, itching, muscle spasms, seizures, anemia, leukopenia, muscle loss or loss of cognitive function, loss of senses, muscle loss or organ failure. All sectors of facility Cardboard 7 are to be installed with a Class 9 industrial filtration system at all times to prevent the presence of dust in the facility. Five dust sensors are to be placed around the object's containment chamber at all times. In the event of the detection of dust particles in the air of any part of the facility, a level 4 containment breach is to be declared and all instances of the object are to be located and contained and further air filtration systems are to be installed. All filtration systems in facility Cardboard 7 are to have their filters replaced daily. Report 94% see Appendix A of all instances of the object appear to be microscopic insects or arachnids varying in size from 10 micrometers in width to 50 micrometers in width, depending on its predecessors, location, and method of infection. All instances share a method of cell consumption, exhaust expulsion, and asexual reproduction. Most instances resemble either Acilius solcactus, a type of water beetle, or Atriosopsis exploitia, a species of spider, Though some recent instances have shared traits with numerous other species of insect, arachnid and reptile. All instances of the object are entirely mechanical and electronic, with visible processor microchips on their metal exoskeletons and noticeable metal attachments and adaptations in place of normal appendages or organs. All instances of the object contain within their largest central body part at least one stomach, simple motor, battery, cooling system, transceiver, and black box one-fifth of the overall size of the object. Each of these basic organs is connected to one another through a series of interconnected tubes and pump systems that transfer fluids to and from each organ, including the object's processor. Testing has shown that all instances of the object require some manner of living cells to survive, 
and are only capable of living for three hours without sustenance. When any instance of the object finds or is introduced to any organism, all instances of the object within a one mile radius will be notified via the object's transceiver and will attempt to enter the body of the organism. All instances have been proven capable of drilling or breaking through most non-anomalous non-magnetic substances and are capable of gliding short distances and clinging to dust particles to transport themselves by air. Once they have reached the organism, hereby referred to as the subject, all instances of the object will enter the bloodstream of the subject via the use of whatever cutting or piercing appendages it has developed. This process takes an average of two to three hours to complete. Once an instance of the object has entered the bloodstream of the subject, it will immediately begin eating and dissolving all living cells it finds while travelling through the bloodstream of the subject, appearing to favour the cells of vital organs over skin, fat and muscle cells. After a certain amount, currently believed to be entirely random, of cells has been dissolved, the object will expel from its reproductive organs a replica of itself showing similar design and function, exuding one adaptation that allows the object to better exploit and feed on this environment. Average lifespan of any given instance of the object can vary from 5 hours to 24 hours with sustenance and 10 minutes to an hour without sustenance. Appendix A As of Insurgency personnel have found the exact frequency of the object's transceivers. Though insurgency personnel have not yet decoded the data being sent across this frequency, they have been able to successfully pinpoint any instance of the object with the signals being sent, as well as the exact number of instances into the thousands. Appendix B Testing logs recorded from contained samples of the object. Test 1 Test 10 instances of the object are placed in a vacuum sealed test chamber with a remote camera and microphone system and a single test subject. 3 pm Instances of the object are released. Subject is instructed to remain stationary. 3 30 pm After 3 minutes, the subject began to report a stinging pain in his feet indicating that some or all instances of the object have reached him. Insurgency personnel confirmed this shortly after, with four instances having begun burrowing through his feet and up his legs, the other six moving towards the test subject. 4pm 14 instances of the object inside the test subject, all of which are moving up the legs and towards the torso. Subject begins to report the pain moving up his legs. 4.30pm 39 instances of the object in total two inside the brain of the subject, the other 37 inside the torso. Subject begins screaming and attempts to open the containment cell door. 5 p.m. Subject can no longer stand and begins to scream for help. The subject requests multiple times for the test to end. All requests are ignored. 5.30 p.m. Sudden spike in the number of object instances occurs, raising the total to 487. Subject begins to seize. 6 p.m. Subject begins to visibly hollow. Seizure ends and subject resumes screaming. Subject's pupils appear fully dilated for the rest of the test. 6.30 p.m. Subject stops screaming and requests once again for the test to end. Request is ignored. Subject does not speak for the rest of the test. 7 p.m. Test subject dies. Approximately 5,000 instances of the object are inside. Test ends 24 hours afterward. After all, instances of the object have died. Test subject's bones are currently in storage, awaiting examination. Test 2 Test 500 test subjects are placed in a vacuum sealed test chamber with a remote monitoring system. One instance of the object is released into the chamber. 1 p.m. Object instance released. Subjects are given no instruction. 3 p.m. One subject reports of a headache. 21 instances of the object are present in the room. 5 p.m. 13 test subjects are reporting pain in various areas. One subject deceased. Other subjects are becoming visibly agitated because of the death. Instance count has surpassed 8,000. 7 p.m. 80 test subjects reporting pain and other early symptoms of infection. 17 deceased. Five are showing late infection symptoms and are near death. Instance count has surpassed 25,000. 9 p.m. 197 subjects deceased. All others are reporting early to late symptoms of infection. Instance count has surpassed 100,000. 11 p.m. 325 subjects deceased. All others are reporting late symptoms of infection. Instance count has surpassed 250,000. 1 a.m. 
499 subjects deceased. Last remaining subject appears to be near death. Instance count has surpassed 500,000. 3 a.m. All subjects deceased. Instances of the object are still eating the corpses. Instance count has not changed. 5 a.m. All subjects have been eaten entirely. Only bones remain. Test ends 24 hours afterward, after all instances of the object have died. Test subjects' bones are incinerated immediately afterwards. Appendix C. Incident report involving an escaped test subject infected with instances of the object. Incident report. Date. Description of incident. First attempted test via introduction of the object to humans. Test subject died as expected. Approximately 400 instances of the object escaped the containment cell three hours after testing. A Class F containment breach was later declared after staff began showing signs of infection and over 70 staff members died before or during the evacuation procedure. A total of seven items were lost and $5 million in equipment was destroyed. Action taken. Change in item use to prevent further incidents.